What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about do you really need an emergency fund and how do you start saving one up if you don't have one right now? So you may have heard the statistic that just 39% of Americans could pay for an emergency expense of $1,000 or more. And that's really scary because emergencies happen. It's not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. Whether it's your car needing repair or you know a medical expense that comes up because we all know insurance doesn't cover much. So it's apparent I feel like now more than ever that an emergency fund is such a critical critical thing to have if you're going to have financial stability. If you think about it, an emergency fund is like step number one in most financial experts roadmap to financial success. Step one, emergency fund. Step two, like and beyond everything else that comes next. But if you take a step back, the skills you build by learning to save up an emergency fund are the exact same skills that you'll need for all the steps that come after saving an emergency fund. So while an emergency fund is super important and it is the first step, it's not like all for nothing that you'll just save this emergency fund and then those skills won't be useful. They'll be exactly the skills that that you'll need to continue on a path to financial success. I think an emergency fund is also the hardest step because it is first. If you're facing down a mountain of debt and you're just not sure how to even get started with tackling your finances and getting things under control, taking that first step and diving in can be really difficult. So what is an emergency fund? An emergency fund is just money that you have set aside in a savings account, typically a separate savings account that is earmarked for emergencies and is not meant to be spent on anything else. You don't touch it, you don't use it, you don't invest it, you just put it in savings and you forget about it for a rainy day when you actually need it. An emergency is not something like birthday presents or Christmas presents or normal oil changes on your car. An emergency is things that you can't predict, that you don't expect. In this video, I'll tell you the seven things that we did to get started with saving our emergency fund that we've now built up to $20,000. So my first suggestion is set a goal amount. You need to decide how much you're saving up for this emergency fund so you know what you're working towards. Are you saving a $1,000 emergency fund? Is it 2,000? Is it 2,500? Is it 5,000? You know, what does that starter emergency fund look like for you? And depending on who you ask, you're gonna get different answers as to how much your emergency fund should be, or at least your initial emergency fund should be. But generally, I think it really depends on your particular situation. For us, the starter emergency fund that felt good was one month of expenses. Other people will say $1,000. I don't think a thousand is enough. I think minimum $2,500 to start would be a good emergency fund, but I also don't want to say, you know, an amount that seems unattainable for some people to save up and then you don't get started at all. So just in general, this whole thing of building an emergency fund, it's going to feel intimidating at first because you're not practiced at it. You've never probably never done it before. And it just feels overwhelming because you've got other things going on financially like debt and stuff like that it is, seems more urgent, but the emergency fund, it's the basis, it's the foundation for everything. So set an amount that you feel comfortable with, pick that number and then track it. Get some sort of visual tracker that you can color in and fill up or you know, make some sort of spreadsheet or something where you're tracking it. But whatever it is, whatever works for you, do something preferably visual that will help you track your progress because that will keep you motivated. The more I've tracked our progress and all the things we've been trying to do financially, the more motivated I've been and the less likely to veer off course I've been as well. Tip number two is take advantage of extra paycheck months. This is one of the biggest ones that I think people don't realize unless you get paid monthly and this won't work for you but let's say you get paid bi-weekly every other week you'll generally get two paychecks per month except some months usually twice a year if you get paid bi-weekly you will get a third paycheck that month and those months are gold for emergency fund building because if you just build your life around two paychecks a month the month that you get that third paycheck you just set that paycheck aside and put it right into your emergency fund like it doesn't even exist. Just budget as if you're getting two paychecks a month all year round and right there you've got two full paychecks that are gonna go right into an emergency fund and that will probably cover your emergency fund because it's about half the income you would get for a whole month and so two paychecks would be a whole month of income and right there you've got your emergency fund. On top of that, any extra money that comes in should be going to your emergency fund as well if you wanna build it up as quick as possible. So I'm talking about tax refunds, also birthday money, Christmas money, if you get like, you know, 
a refund from a health insurance company. Stick all of that right into your emergency fund. Every single extra dollar that comes in goes right into your emergency fund. It's an emergency fund for a reason. It's for emergencies, so treat it as such. Treat it like it's an emergency to build that up and put everything extra that's coming in right into that emergency fund. My next tip for building your emergency fund is open a completely separate bank account. Put this money in a separate bank account, and if you don't trust yourself, not to pull from it easily, put it at a separate bank from the bank that you usually bank at. Either do a high yield savings account with one of the online banks, which aren't so high yield right now, but eventually those interest rates will go back up. But yeah, do use a separate savings account or a separate bank if you need to. So that money is designated in its own account and you know clearly it's for emergencies. It's not sitting in your main checking account where you may accidentally spend it. Our high yield savings account is at Citizens Access, which is an online branch of the bank that we use, Citizens Bank, but I know Ally has a really good one and there's a bunch of other ones out there. So if you do want to check out a high yield savings account, high yield, it's not going to give you much interest, especially if it's a small amount of money because you're just starting out with your emergency fund, but it's better than nothing. Every dollar helps. So if you want to do a high yield savings account, I'll put in the description a couple of examples of ones you can look into. Next, this one's a big one if you can afford it. And I know for a long time we couldn't, but if you can afford it, even if it's a very small amount of money, put this as a line item in your budget. So treat it like a bill. So each month or however often you budget and you put list out all your bills, include one of your bills as emergency fund and put $25 or $50 or $100, whatever you can afford in that month's budget towards that expense and treat it like it's an actual bill until you hit that goal amount for your emergency fund savings. Now this suggestion assumes that you have a budget to start with and that's a whole other topic for a whole nother day. However, I will say that you need to budget. So that's maybe like you know, tip 4A of this suggestion is you need to have a budget. But budgeting, I could talk about budgeting all day long. I love budgeting so much, but I just will leave you with this about budgeting. If you think about budgeting and you think of feeling restricted, then you aren't thinking about budgeting the right way. Because the thing is, your money is your money. When you get income each month, you've got a certain amount of money, right? And no matter how much budgeting you do, that's the most amount of money you have to spend. And if you spend more than that, then you're going in the negative and you're taking on debt. So your income is what's restricting you, not a budget. A budget is just a plan for that money that's coming in. And a plan is empowering. So don't think of the budget as restricting. The budget actually gives you permission to spend and a plan for your money and opens things up a lot once you start getting in the groove of it. But yeah, a lot of people think of a budget as restrictive and it's really, really not. Okay, tip number five is start small. Don't think that, okay, I need to save $3,000 for an emergency fund and I need to do it all in the next like couple months. Be realistic with your timeline and just start small. Like I said before, if you could just put $25 a month aside or $50 a month or $100 a month. It may not seem like a lot, but it honestly will add up faster than you think. And also as you get more into it, as you get further along with the process, somehow you figure out how to get better at it because you're becoming more practiced at it. So it goes faster. You're able to save more each month. You figure out different techniques and strategies and things that you can do differently to save more money. So Again, just get started somewhere. Start small, even if it's just $25. Start there and go from there. And each time you make a contribution to that emergency fund, you'll be ahead of where you were before and you will feel that much better. Tip number six for starting your emergency fund may seem really obvious and pretty straightforward, but it's really worth mentioning. And that is in order to have extra money each month to set aside, you need to do one of two things. You either need to increase your income or decrease your expenses. Without doing one of those two things, you're not gonna have any extra wiggle room in your budget if you don't have any right now. If you don't have any extra money at the end of the month and you keep doing the same thing you're doing now, you're still not gonna have extra money that you're gonna be able to set aside for an emergency fund. So increasing your income can look like a lot of things and decreasing your expenses can be done a lot of ways too. I'm not gonna get into all the details of it because I have other videos about how to save money and stuff like that. Um, but what I will say is I know that when we started budgeting and we started our debt-free journey, I looked at our budget and I was like, there's nothing we can cut here. Like we're bare bones, but we were bare bones in my mind as my mindset was at that time. Take an actual hard look at your budget, even if it's just small things. Like here's a good example. 
our car insurance. We hadn't gotten a new quote in like three or four years. I called our car insurance company. They were like, oh, you're eligible for a much lower rate and we're able to lower our car insurance by I think it was like $40 a month. That right there, that was a quick, easy way to just re-examine something that's already in our budget make a change and then we had extra money in our budget every month to put towards our emergency fund and then later put towards debt payments. And my last tip for building your emergency fund is automate it to the extent that you can. I know that I can't trust myself with certain things financially. Like I am not disciplined enough to stay on top of certain things. And so as we've gone along in our journey, I've tried to automate everything that I can. So let's say you've got in your budget, $100 a month is gonna go towards your emergency fund. Don't just trust yourself that you're gonna transfer that $100 necessarily. Set up an automatic transfer with your bank that $100 goes from your checking to your savings account on the first of the month or the fifth of the month or whatever day works based on when you get paid. Or set up an auto transfer from your bank to whatever bank that you are putting your emergency fund in. Automate it to the extent that you can because when you're trying to build an emergency fund and this is new and you're trying to build this new muscle, the more work that can be done for you that you don't have to actually take the effort to go physically move money from one place to another, the better. And I still do this. Even though we have a $20,000 emergency fund, we are paying off a massive amount of debt now and I automate everything that I can so that I don't accidentally spend that money that should be going to debt and accidentally use it for something that I shouldn't be spending money on. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed these tips. The main takeaway that I want you guys to get from this is an emergency fund is the critical foundation to all other financial success. The skills you'll gain in building an emergency fund are the exact same skills you need to save for retirement, become financially independent, pay off debt, all the other things that come next. And finally, just start small. Don't get intimidated. You guys can do it. You totally got this. And I promise you, once you start going, it will get faster, it will get easier, and the peace of mind you will have when you go to bed at night knowing that you have an emergency fund in cash sitting in the bank is indescribable. If you guys have any other tips on how you can save for an emergency fund, then make sure you comment below. I love to hear your guys' tips and suggestions. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, then make sure you hit that red subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a subscriber and I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Bye!